Welcome to the BHB Trilogy Podcast with your host, Beast, Hot Sauce, and Buckets. Hi. Welcome to the BHB Trilogy Podcast, episode 18. We're here with Coach Chewy Hernandez, offensive line coach at Bishop Amat High School, and also the boys' dean, freshman boys. Is it, what is it, freshman boys and seniors? Freshmen and juniors. Freshmen and juniors. Uh, yeah. So... Coach, can you give us some background on your life? Uh, a youngster or what? How, how far back? Or like, just a background on yourself. So, I uh, grew up in La Puente, uh, part of a family of seven. Um, been in parochial school all my life. Um, started at St. Joseph's in La Puente. Uh, Education-wise, then I ended up at Bishop Amat High School. Uh, graduated in 98, um, was fortunate enough to continue at Whittier College uh, for four years. Um, while at Whittier, I, went, I met my uh, wife, Nicole. Um, mm-hmm. From there, a uh, uh, couple things. Um, worked uh, at Sparks Middle School, worked at St. Francis of Rome, a um, couple other places here and there, and then uh, ended up back at Fishbone High School where I kind of always wanted to be at so. So, uh, Coach Chewy, how many years have you been coaching? Oh, shoot, let me think. It's uh, I think this is the nineteenth. Nineteenth. Yeah, and it's all been at Amat. So, I've coached. So you started at Amat. Yeah, as soon as I. Do does every coach start at the freshman level? No, but uh, or for me it was. I started right when I graduated from, actually before that, um, in December of my senior year in college, I went to go talk to Coach DeFury, who's the head coach at the time at Ahmad, and um, said I wanted to come back and coach. And so uh, he offered me an opportunity at the freshman level to, I wasn't even really a position coach, I was like an assistant position coach. I just wanted to get in. So um, I started what freshman you- year, freshman staff, and I kind of, I've done all levels. What is Coach DeFury? What is is he like defensive? He's a DC. Yeah, he's a DC. He's a he's a goat. Uh, so Eli. Um, question. Oh, oh, uh, uh, what expect what expectations do you have for your players on your team? Um, I think the biggest one that they, they hold themselves accountable to what we ask them to do. Um, it's, it's, it's probably one of our, our biggest strengths as a, as a football program is our kids understand what's expected of them. Um, whether it's doing a workout, whether it's watching film, whether it's, um, going hard at practice, um, everything that we ask them to do, we expect them to hold themselves accountable for it and not have to have somebody like stand over them and watch them do it. Um, and I think that's the biggest expectation that we have. And, and for the most part, the kids come through with it too. Um, it's real fun to coach at Bishop High School because we have those kids that are, that are self-motivated, that, that understand the, the, the level of, of excellence that we expect when they're doing um, their work and, and it's, mm-hmm. it's a it's a privilege for me to be there to, to coach. Uh, so, how do you feel about Coach Coley leaving for a survey? Oh, it's 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 a good uh experience for him. Um, it's always great to see other programs um, um want our coaches. I think it says a lot about our uh, who we are. Um, mm-hmm. and he's not the first coach to leave. Uh, he's he's gonna do well over there. Um, it's great to see that, uh, and it shows the amount of respect other coaches have for our programs. Because you see that too with, um, you know, Coach Verdi at Ranch Cucamonga. He's a head coach over there. He did, he did a great job this year over there. Um, we've had coaches just just smash it other places, and it's it's great to see because we understand um, over here at Alma, there's somewhere to kind of um, spread the the gospel that we have here at Bishop High School um, mm-hmm. to other places. I think it's a great thing. For those kids to see how, how we work over here and, and 
it's always it's always uh, a good thing to be needed. Um, and I think a lot more of the world needs more Bishmat Lancers at their places. Uh, so you want to ask a question? Uh, how has Corona virus impacted your players? Well, I know for one, we can't practice. So <laughs> yeah, so I well, I heard that uh, Coach Coley has them doing like push-ups, like the extra cord your push-ups. Well, they have their workouts, right? So um, the kids do their stuff. I know for me, with my uh, specifically with my position group, um, I contact them through Huddle. So that's kind of how I message them. And every day, uh, they send me an emoji that they finish their workout. So um, uh, it kind of lets me know like who's doing things. And also in that, that group text, they're able to see who else is, is sending those emoji. So they know who's working, who's not. Um, and Zoom meetings too. So we've, we've had uh, one or two, um, we're gonna have one again on Monday. So most of the time it's just seeing how they're doing. Um, they look bored. Uh, I think they're all bored. <laughs> they just wanna, wanna get going. Uh, I know especially the seniors too, um, they're real anxious. Uh, before all this started happening, they were, they were working really hard in the, in the weight room. Um, when we had our practices out on the field uh, for those one, one a week, like you could tell there's an energy there um, and they're excited to play with, uh, you know, try to play again. So uh, it just, it, it's unfortunate that, that this stuff is occurring, but it's also, uh, uh, I guess, a, a testament to, our, to the kids that they're getting their work done um, outside of it too. So you guys have a question? Oh, no, because we have questions and you like you answer them like within the question that I asked you. So, no, because I was asking you a question and then Eli has a question, but then you answer. What was, the question. What was his question? It was. What was the question? It was, it was, how do you maintain the, I mean, how, how have you adjusted your workouts because of Corona? Well, I know there's. And well, I guess too, because I mean, we have a weight room at school, right? Yeah. So we know that some kids don't have that. So I think they adjusted uh, body workouts and those type of things too, too. body weight. Um, Cause we know that not all kids have a weight room at their house. So they got to get creative. Um, I know for like for myself, I watch uh, Darian Johnson. And so if you don't know who Darian is, look him up on. Uh, oh yeah. I saw his, he does like workouts, right? Yeah. Instagram and uh, he's everywhere. But he's a, he's a personal trainer. He's right by the school, too. But he's at South Mead um, facility over there in West Covina. And he does a lot of workouts with, like, uh, like water bottles and um, all kinds of different things. So uh, we picked up some things from him. At least me. Like, I do it at home. Uh, Stella? Maintain the connection to your players. To players. I think just through messaging, through huddle and stuff and the Zoom meeting. So... I was pretty um, connected with them at the school, just, you know, seeing them every day at, at lunch and, and at break and being able to socialize and just say, hey, how's it well, How do you create the connection with your players? Because I know sometimes, like, with me, or, like, when you, uh, like, you're a freshman and, and it's a new school and everything, and you're kind of nervous and you don't really know all the coaches. So how do you create, like, the okay. connection with the players? I mean, it's just like asking, just talking with them, communicating with them, talking to them. And I don't know, it's real, I guess it's just real easy for me because I, I genuinely care about my players. Like, I don't, I don't care so much about if they're good in football or not, just speaking as a coach. I care that, that they're enjoying themselves at, at, in high school. So for these four years that they're in high school, I, I hope they get a lot out of it, not just sports wise, but just like, just associating with people. Uh, uh, learning how to how to create relationships, um, learning how to how to um, communicate with their teachers, so communicating with leadership or or, or 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 things like that. Because later in life, that's what they're gonna have to do when they when they have their jobs and, and when they have their families. They're gonna have to know how to maneuver through those situations. And I'm just hoping that these four years that that they're getting something out of it. So. I generally care when they, about them and how they grow as a person. 
Um, the football, it, that's just like, that's just the whip, whipped cream and the cherry on top uh, or the chocolate syrup or the caramel, whatever, cookies and cream, whatever you put on top of your, your ice cream. But mm-hmm. That's how I feel. And I think that's, that's what, I think hopefully the kids understand that I'm just not asking because they play football. Like, I, I shouldn't care. And that's why I, I just don't talk to football players when I'm out and about. Like, I try to socialize with, with every student and, and see how's it going and, and, and how's their life been, even if they don't feel the need to talk, um, have a lengthy conversation with me there. Um, I hope they understand that, that I'm there for them and, and I'm hoping they're having a, a good day. Uh, so, Stella, do you have a question? Yeah. All right, so quick break from our sponsors. The podcast here with Coach Chewy Hernandez, uh, offensive line coach. So, Stella, you have a question? Do you maintain connection as dean to students outside football? Yes. Uh, geez, um, well, my office is always open. So, um, students are, are more than welcome to come in and talk to me. And we do have a few, because it's not just um, me, right? So, it's uh, me, uh, Mr. Canales. Um, this is Nass and, and this is Alonzo. So we have students who come in all the time uh, just wanting to talk um, or let us know maybe they're not having a good day. And it doesn't necessarily be mean that they're not having a good day because of, uh, of they, because they got in trouble, but just because you know um, things happen, stuff happens, and they kind of just want somebody to talk to, maybe uh, get some advice on certain things. So they come in and talk. So um, outside of football, that's one of those things that, that we have as a as an obligation as a dean. It's not just getting kids in trouble. It's not, it's not even that. I tell the kids that we don't get you in trouble. We just hold you accountable to the rules. So um, yeah. your choices. Your choices is what leads to those consequences. And we just tell kids all the time, just make good choices. Um, make good choices. And, and sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. And we never hold against them. I know sometimes kids and, and, and families, they feel that um, why are we always talking to their kid? Why are we don't find kid? And just uh, we just want to make sure they're making good choices, and they seem to be falling into a pattern of not making the good choices again, mm-hmm. again, 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 again. So uh, we're not going to stop holding them accountable. We're going to keep it because there's more, there's more to it than than than, than that. And I hope yeah. hopefully the, the families understand that, that there's more to it than oh, why do we get this again? Why do we get the same? We're trying to teach them um, something, so hopefully they, they get that lesson. So, how does social media? Oh, go ahead. How has how has Corona impacted recruiting? Ooh, actually, that's a good one because uh, I think ooh, this one's usually during spring football, and we actually would have started uh, in a week or two when we come back from when if we we were supposed to come back from vacation. We were going to jump into spring football, I think, in a week. And during that time, um, the NCA has their, their, uh, their open period where the coaches can come on campus and talk to coaches and uh, evaluate players. So they have an opportunity to visit a school twice, the school. Um, one is to talk to coaches, you know, maybe talk to the counselor, get the, the transcripts uh, for the kids. Um, and then the second one would be to evaluate. They could evaluate on the field. So while the kids are practicing, they can see them. They can kind of um, look to see how they move and then how they run and how they catch, block, all those things. Um, it looks like we're not going to have that opportunity because I think colleges are shut down through June. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I know we're, we're still like at a two-week thing where I'm not too sure what the last letter said or, or anything, but um, it's not happening. They're not going to come to campus because NCAA shut them down. So as far as that part of the recruiting, that's going to hurt kids um, um, the most. Yeah. So what do we have to do as coaches? Well, we have to think outside the box. So um, what we usually do, we send the coaches um, their, their info, their contact info, um, and that's something that's already been done. That was done in, in December. We, we, as soon as season ends, um, um, we start collecting data from the kids with, with, their, with their address, their, their, 
their phone numbers, their, their Twitter accounts, um, everything that, everything and anything a coach can contact the kids with. We give them heights and weights. We give them um, uh, positions and we'll link up their huddle videos. So as soon as the season ends, well, actually during the season, we release the videos of the kids so they can, uh, they ask for it and they want to put their, their videos together, they can do it. But mostly because I want the kids to, to work on it during the year. So at, towards the end of the season, um, when it's over, they won't have a lot of work to do. They can just send it, um, finish it, and then send it to whoever they need to send it to. Or it's completed, or we can send the link to anybody. Um, yeah. So we're doing a lot more of that now. Um, DMing coaches. Um, coaches are emailing uh, nonstop to, to, to us about getting a list of kids, uh, mostly for the 2021 classes. Um, mm -hmm. But we send them everybody. We send them who we have on campus, juniors, senior, uh, juniors sophomores, and freshmen. So they get their names. Um, and and uh, on Tuesday, what was it? Uh, yeah, this Tuesday is, I think, the 21st. Um, I have a Zoom meeting with uh, one of the companies we use, Field Level. Um, it's free for us and free for the kids. And that's a connection that, that coaches use to connect with college coaches. And so there's, a, a, I guess, a webinar on, on, on how to connect more with coaches during this time. So uh, I'm going to probably get some good uh, info from that meeting too. Um, but uh, I think we do a really good job um, outside of all this stuff. I think we do a good job anyways of, of connecting with coaches and, and getting them the info. And uh, as you see, uh, I mean, they're, they're asking about kids, they're calling kids, and, and, and it's a few of them. It's not just uh, one or two. We have a few kids that, that coach, college coaches are talking about or wanting to get more information. On. But it definitely is a challenge. Without that spring ball, that's going to be um, – that was big for some kids. So hopefully um, if, this, if, if things get going in the summer, maybe the NCAA will allow a, a, a period where the coaches can come in the summer and see practices and stuff. I don't know. I don't know if they'll do that, but yeah. I have to think of something. So, stuff. How does social media impact students and recruiting? Oh, that's the way to do it now. I think that's – it was funny. Um, I went to school last week to pick up some things that I forgot, and mm -hmm. I was going through the old videos because I wanted to get um, – DHB Trilogy, some highlights, uh, past highlights, because we have, have a project in mind. But um, co coach, uh, colleges used to send um, cassette tapes, video, video, VHS. I don't know if some of you know what that is. VHS? <laughs> VHS tapes. So they, used to, VHS. they used to send VHS tapes, blank ones. And they would have like uh, – I sent a letter with it that said, um, could you please uh, give us video, like game video. So it'd be a whole game of mm -hmm. a certain player that they wanted. So we, we would record it and send it back out to them. That's how it used to be done. Um, now with social media, it's easy. It's because you have the, I, I, I DM coaches, the, the, the huddle links. Um, and then they can just watch the film, right? And that's it. And, but the, the huddle links are highlights, but that's what they're watching first. That's what gets their attention. Um, I'm not sure how many of them watch whole game films anymore, um, but and that's how they contact kids too. The, the, they're communicating a lot through social media, through, through DMs, and, and, and that's kind of where they're seeing them. So that's, that's where we're at now. But it doesn't mean that's the only thing they do, but I think with social media, that's, that's the attention grabber. That's, that's how they start contacting and then and then they go through the, the, the visits to the school, the talking to coaches, um, getting the transcripts, talking to counselors if need be, um, mm -hmm. and all the other um, things that they do. Talking to the people in the front, um, the really good thorough coaches, like they'll talk to our office managers in the front while they're waiting for for somebody to you know take them to the football office or whatever when they get to the school. And yeah. they get info from, from the front office managers too. And you kind of kind of know who who does their homework and who does it from the college coaches, um, um, based on some of those things too. So, how many of your athletes have gone to play in college? Yeah, so I saw that um, question, and shoot, uh, I think 
me personally, from from where I've, when I've been at Amat, I don't know. It's it's close. It's it's close to I don't know, eighty or ninety maybe. Eighty or ninety. Yeah, I'm more well. at Amat, but if you're talking about like guys I coached, like personally, I don't, I don't know, like um, like guys you've coached personally. I know we, well, shoot, well uh, the past few years, right? So I've been an offensive line coach this year and last year. We've had four of the five starters go this year. They're gonna play college, and then last year those four of the five. So that was that's eight. Um, to play football or to go to college? We're talking about playing football, right? Play football, yeah. Uh, and then I coached varsity two years. I had like one guy go to Arizona. Um, I had another kid that, that was a wrestler too back then, and he chose rest, to do wrestling in college instead of football. So, I don't know, maybe about nine personally, nine or ten. But like since you've been there, 90 have gone to college? Uh, like, yeah, like 80, 90, easy. I think that's a, that's a safe number. Mm-hmm. Because I, I know I can list like 60-something. But I know there's more. There's, there's, and we're always updating that database. I always find out a kid or two that uh, decided not to play as soon as he graduated from Mama. And then the next year he decides to play and he's playing football somewhere. So, so Eli has a question. Can you tell us anything about the football schedule for next year? <laughs> uh, I don't know. You guys are going to Seattle, right? That was the plan. Oh, yeah. Huh? Well, how, how has Corona affected that? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if we're traveling. We'll see. I, everything... Everything is as is right now. So our schedule should be the same. But God, we're, we're in such a position where we're not too sure of the, the, the next week. We're not, I, I'm not thinking that far ahead. I know Coach Haggerty probably is because he's the head coach. Yeah. Um, but as for, for myself, I'm going like this is how the schedule is laid out. That's how I'm planning it. And that's how everybody's planning it. Now, Are there um, any uh... – Specific teams that you want to beat? No, oh, no. I, uh, we're we're just. I just hope we get better every week. Are there are there any teams that you look at the schedule and you're like, oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna smash them that day? I I think when coaches start thinking that way, that's when the football gods uh, bring them back down to earth and say, uh, coach, you shouldn't be thinking that way. I, I it's just. I've had too much experience to know that if you take somebody lightly or if you feel like this is going to happen, like this, we're just going to smash and you start talking about it, it's not going to happen. And it's and something, <laughs> something will, will happen uh-huh. the opposite way. So you can't think that way. Um, so I, I just don't prescribe that. But also that's the way I, was, I grew up in this game uh, from the coaches I had. Uh, we had a, lot of, a lot of smart guys um, that won a lot, but – um, they were all humble, and they they taught us how to how to play with humility and, and confidence, but humility and, and 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 I think that that's kind of how I feel. So when yeah. I look at the schedule, I'm excited about it because we have some local games that that we didn't have in the past. So it's going to be be cool to go up against those teams um, like La Habra. I've never coached against La Habra. I've never played against La Habra. I know they're a great program, so that's going to be awesome. Um, it's going to be. A You've never played against La Habra. La Habra, no, we didn't. We haven't. I don't. I don't know how many times in the history too we we played against them. So that's going to be fun. That'll be a good game, and and, and they have a coach there that, that's well respected, and, and they have a winning program. So that'll be fun. That'll be cool. That's going to be a good local game. To play against. Um, uh, we have Diamond Ranch again. Uh, they always play as tough. Um, it can go either way. Uh, so that's going to be cool. We have Damien uh, on the schedule back again. So that's going to be a fun, uh, like, local Catholic uh, game. Um, the Seattle games, that's fire. I mean, that, that's going to be, a, you know, tr- the traveling, the, the, the playing them, that'll be cool. And then, uh, yeah. what's the other game? Uh, I don't have the schedule in front of me. 
don't know. But how come we only have four home games? Because of the, the trip. Oh, that's right. The trip. Uh, still have a question. What was your most successful team and why was it successful? Oh, well, JV, easy. JV uh, 2013. 2013, JV year, we went 10-0. I think that's I, – I, I look back at – I didn't find any undefeated JV team since 1980. Um, we probably really? Back further, yeah. Well, didn't this year JV team, they went 9-1, right? Well, yeah, we, go, we go, uh, went 9-1 too a couple times. <laughs> but uh, – Didn't you have the ball? Is that the – what? Is that is that the game ball you sent to the group chat that you couldn't find? Yeah, we found it. I have it. Yeah, thirteen and old game ball. Yeah, my mom's. Hey, I had a uh, on that team on that JV team. We had Kai Higgins who ended up at Purdue. We had Christian Gaston who was at Fresno State. Uh, Tori Sweet who broke all kinds of records and ended up at Western Oregon. Now he's at uh, Jacksonville State playing baseball. Um, we had a few Division One guys. Uh, Tim Dolan's at APU. Um, so we had some ballers on that team that can play. And uh, it just seemed like I was playing Madden. Like I got <laughs> all the offense, and it was just like whatever I called, the kids made it happen. And, Wait, you're, you were offense? You were offensive coordinator or something? I was a head coach, but I called the plays. Uh, most, most of the time I was the head coach. Um, Is that – oh, that's, that sounds fun. It is when you have those guys out there. It was yeah. good. It was, I had a lot of fun. Um, and easily the, the best team. They had uh, that year, three teams that we played against uh, didn't cross the 50-yard line. Really? Yeah, the defense was, was awesome. So um, uh, we had a good, uh, good team. But uh, we had some guys. So – so next time, please be sure to podcast.